Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Beaumont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Great to be here with you tonight. Yeah, another one for the books. And Yes, yes. So, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Because was it yesterday was both the premiere of Superman and Lois, the That's final correct. season? And 10 years since the debut of The Flash. Yeah, I think it was either either a Thursday, either yesterday or Sunday. But yeah, they all, yeah, they were right there together. Yeah. And it's it wasn't like your birthday or anything? <laughs> <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> no, that's not until December. But yeah, it did feel that way. Uh, it wasn't, like I said, uh, I think I, I did post on our socials. Um, uh, this sort of a bittersweet uh, season premiere day because, um, yeah, I mean, it's, we do both enjoy Superman and Lois, and um, and from what I gather, it it, it just seeing the, the the one time the few moments I was on social media last night just to see uh, um, what was going on. It was like trending at least on Twitter. It was like in a, you know you it was in the, in the top trends for the, in the U.S. Last night, mm-hmm. uh, as far as the Superman and Lois premiere, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and just seeing just some of the you know just seeing some of the reactions and stuff. I mean, it, it's you know, they lived up to what they were saying. The uh, showrunners were saying as far as uh, you know taking a, a interesting and a different take on the uh, on a, a very well known storyline in the DC comic universe. So yeah, yeah. I mean, probably. 80% of that was just bots from WB who wanted to get positivity positivity out there amidst all of the Joker talk that happened True. over the weekend and Ooh, boy, continues yeah. to go on and on. Yeah, Granted, yeah. it's hilarious how big the conversation is for a movie that the box office score was $35 million. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it finally finished the weekend at 37, uh, but okay. still, that way they project. I mean, it was the, the, the trends were trending downward. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, and it, uh, yeah, they were expecting 40, and yeah, it, it, it barely got to 37. Yeah. Madam Web did better than it in box office. Yeah. And, and yeah. also, and, and also Cinescore. Yeah. You know, it, it's a sign, and and I say this all the time, like, I really don't want to watch previews, um, but I do, you can tell almost when a studio knows they have a winner and when a studio knows they, when they have a loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I had forgotten for a few, for a few like exactly when Joker 2 was coming. I knew it was coming, but mm-hmm. I wasn't inundated with ads or anything yeah. as like a continuous reminder. So I I really don't think WB is that surprised by the outcome considering the lack of marketing it had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, between that and then, um, yeah, they, you know, the, Things they were like dropping because they were really starting to hype up some other things in the new DC studios. I think there's the new uh, uh, dynamic duo, the the Robin story. I think dropped early, mm-hmm. like, dropped last week. I think I saw and well, not the well, I guess a premiere for it or a trailer, a teaser for it, teaser trailer for it, and then just just you know some of the behind the scenes stuff to sort of you know Todd Phillips talking about uh, you know I think he's bailing on no more. DC projects or comic book projects and, um, and, and other things. And I know you've, I know you've seen the Joker. Yep. I haven't yet. Uh, but, um, yeah, any, any spoiler or non-spoiler thoughts you had about the film itself since you're, you're one of the few people <laughs> who, you know, based on the box office numbers who saw it. Right. So I will say it's not a musical. I don't mm-hmm. consider it to be a musical. I don't think that's why comic book or, just people who saw the movie in general are saying it's bad. It, it, it's not because of the genre. I mean, come on. Do you know how well musicals do? <laughs> like yeah. a good musical do? It has nothing to do with that. And we've covered multiple episodes of television in the comic book genre. And their musical episodes really are executed well. This yeah. is not executed well. Mm. Um and I don't I don't like to do spoilers, even though there's not really a whole lot to spoil. Um, 
in my opinion about this movie. It just is what it is. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think throughout the entire movie how it's kind of unfortunate what they did. Mm -hmm. Because when we first saw the trailer, I forgot about this. But I remember us discussing the trailer, and I said, it should be told from Harley Quinn's perspective, and everything should be in her head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert, they didn't do that. <laughs> and spoiler alert, that's to its detriment. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because having this told from Joker's perspective, I think, is the reason why it was its it's not doing well. It's viewed as being a bad movie. It's viewed as being a boring movie. All of the bad adjectives you want to throw out there. Mm. It just is, it almost feels like a weird extension and a weird quasi rendition of what we already saw play out in Joker 1. Mm. so it it's it's a sequel but it's more like an extension and it's just you you're not really satisfied because you you wanted it to be more you're like oh they're doing a sequel so there's there's more to the story to tell and then you introduce harley but Harley's her own character, and I just wish, but her character is almost the, um, how do I put it, is almost the outcome of Joker. So they had an opportunity to do something very well. (laughs) If only (laughs) I had pitched that idea to them at the beginning. (laughs) Because I just, throughout the whole movie, from the get go, I remember that conversation and saying that. And as everything was unfolding, I'm thinking to myself, "Yeah, I I wrote a better movie in five minutes than this. <laughs> it's just so lame." Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, and and people can put out there how it was shot, how the acting and everything, but at the end of the day. It was just all undercooked. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to see it this weekend, uh, maybe Friday. But uh, so I'll share my thoughts on it as well. But uh, definitely wanted to hear yours while the, while the ball was still. The underwhelming film was fresh in your mind. Yeah, I, I definitely checked my, um, my uh, f- phone to see mm-hmm. what time it was <laughs> at least four or five times. Throughout yeah. the movie. And I normally don't do that. Yeah, that's I, a bad idea. Yeah. I started to like a half hour in because mm-hmm. something happened and I was thinking to myself, this seems really quick. What time? <laughs> How long have we been here? And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, this is not, that does not bode well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and, and, and it's, and it's weird because you know how people always say, like, there are people who love bad movies and mm-hmm. build a cult f- following and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that comes more than more about it is always more fascinating to listen to people talk about movies that are considered bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I've enjoyed hearing everyone's thoughts about it, even though it gets a bit repetitious and no one's really becoming that original with their overall thoughts. But at the same time, it's just, I don't know. It's, we all love to get on the hater train together. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And trolls will be trolls. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, um, I spent my week, I, um, so last weekend I, I talked about all these shows that I was binging, right? Right, right. And and at the very end I dropped that I had just started a show on Hulu called Tell Me Lies, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically the R-rated version of a Gossip Girl, Pretty Little mm-hmm. Liars, whatever you'll have it. Um, set in college, 
studying college. So these are all consenting adults. Um, but, and I told you, you didn't see a lot. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how much I would like see where things were going and then get up and do something. Cause mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I, like, I don't know why we needed to see somebody make out for 10 to 15 minutes, but no, 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 there's a lot of nudity. There's a lot mm -hmm. of nudity. This is not for your, for people underage at all. Um, mm -hmm. And also the the main character Lucy, yeah. she just gets worse and worse with every single episode. Uh, and I'm like, why the fuck is she our main character? She is so stupid. <laughs> She's not <laughs> smart. And the sad thing is, this this show flat like goes to the past when they're mm -hmm. in college, when everyone's in college together, yeah. and then fast forwards to the future. And you can see where they are five years after college graduation. So you get okay. you get this back and forth. And so I've seen her in present day. The girl is still acting the same way she did five, six years ago. Whatever. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, uh. Granted, they had a very good like mystery. So yeah. so uh, not not even a mystery. Just like okay, I still am a bit curious of how things are going to turn out. Got it. Um, got it. And I was also right. The second season is arguably better than the first season. Okay, you just have okay. to get through the first season. And I was surprised. I just, I just went through it. Probably because I was doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> <You're most laughs> it was stuff. background noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, background yeah. noise. And then, and so now I'm in the second season. I didn't realize the second season has not, st not stopped airing. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. So but now. Like caught up and I'm like, damn it. I was fully <laughs> binge committed. <laughs> uh, you got to go back to the old linear model of week, a weekly drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I might stock up on the next three, but now because I told you why, how I got involved with the show was because it was all over my TikTok feed. Mm -hmm. Well, now part of me is like, yeah, I have to go to the standard Maldo because I'm going to get so many scenes ruined for me. Yeah. If, <laughs> yeah, if you don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Granted, yeah. I mean, I basically had the entire, like the most recent episode completely spoiled for me on TikTok. It, it, it doesn't really make, it's not a high, like, it's not like, oh my God, I don't want to know anything. It's just, it's just interesting. I like, yeah. I like, uh what they're doing in terms of the this is the past and mm -hmm. how things unfolded yeah. and this is the present and where they are now and how some things have changed yet some things haven't changed lucy mm -hmm. um and just also well well what is what is everybody's moves right now like oh, yeah. like there still seems to be they are still all playing games mm -hmm. But like, like how? And they they threw a curveball at the end of season one that I I did not see coming. Oh. Um, so I am I'm now more curious to understand how that worked out. Okay. Um. So so they they're doing a good job. Um. But but it is the trash TV show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta. We all we all have we all have our trash TV shows that we 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 enjoy to just unwind and just put on like the background noise just to help pass the time. Yeah yeah. So I just had to. Um, so it was basically finished. Like I watched episode five or six of season two. Got up, went to the movie theater, did Joker, came back, put on the next episode. Of <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I did watch I did watch the penguin and I did watch Agatha all along. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> In yeah. between all of that. Um had I, to do that too. Yeah, just that little just those two little shows that's uh that's happening. Yeah, I, I did finally get around to Agatha episode four last night. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Episode four, if I can't reach you, let me let my song teach you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so okay. I guess yeah. <laughs> well, well, you go ahead. I just did a full rant, so I feel yeah, like I yeah. No, I uh, yeah. Like I said, I know I'm almost a full week behind with Agatha, so because I know the new episode drops, I think tomorrow. But 
Um, so I, I my overall thoughts on this episode. So <laughs> I did so as I noted, I did watch it last night, and I sent you a DM saying, "Oh yeah, I finally I, I, yeah I watched Agatha." I air quote watched Agatha. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and uh, you probably know you, we've been doing this well long enough to know I was. You could probably sense that I was underwhelmed. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's probably their worst episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Speaking of how you said how you were checking your phone during Joker, this is the first episode of Agatha where I started checking my phone. Um, and I mean it was it was okay. I mean I'm not saying it was bad, but just. In the in the scale of Agatha shows, I mean, which has been up to date, solid. This one was it was underwhelming. I have it, it, it just was, and I can barely remember like what ha- what happened in it. It was it just it left me it left me cold. Yeah, it it felt it felt very. Now we have now we're on the road. Mm-hmm. Now we have a um, procedural esque template mm-hmm. to plug these characters into a new house yep and to have one of them overcome something that was alluded to in the previous episode and and it just it was like but but we had a different version of the same thing last like yeah. like you don't want that once you fall into the procedural mindset it just or you can not even mindset sorry that's probably the wrong word but that procedural archetype then it just becomes a bit stale and a bit like well this is kind of boring yeah um i also just want to know like can we expect a full musical episode at this point (laughs) 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 just with all the singing and and i swear i swear like i said i watched a full joker movie two and a half hours and then some uh, or no, two two hours. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. like a long time, and and Agatha all along keeps having banger after banger yeah. <laughs> musical <laughs> moments. <laughs> that did not happen really in the Joker. <laughs> so, no, no. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, I, I mean, will, I, yeah. I will say that even even though the episode left me cold, I will say that the ballad. Yeah, because you're right. They do have it is a pretty much a template now. Because we, you know, the, last week we had the the uh, water test, and this yeah, week we had the fire room. test. Mm-hmm. So we we do have the template trials. The so next week, or you know, we'll get earth and air the next two weeks, uh, yeah. in some or, in some order. But I will say the music, the the the, the 70s ballad, the power, you know, rock ballad that they did, uh, it worked. Uh, you know, I you know, it 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 did leave an impression. Uh, even though yeah. it was just the re- remixed version of the, the 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 song that they've been singing with, you know, going down the witch's road, but yeah, uh, yeah, and and they did bring back Audrey Plaza, yeah, um, because they have to summon someone to replace Sharon, R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they, I mean, we all knew that she was going to appear right as soon yep. as they started to. It was like kind of obvious. I did like that moment. And I think the flaw in this episode or the fault in this episode is they didn't do more of this with not even Agatha, but with some of the other characters is the conversation between Rio and and um, Agatha. And we learn that it it was basically implied Rio's the one who had it was her job to take the baby from Mm -hmm. Agatha. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and and I can appreciate that the writing in that scene yeah. is not too explicit. Um, it 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 is very vague because it is a very sensitive subject. So mm-hmm. it felt natural for two yeah. people to have that kind of history. And then, and then you start again to feel a little bit more sympathy towards Agatha, and also an understanding. It's like, well, yeah, if, if that if that witch did that to me, of course I would end up taking her power. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like and For screwing sure. her over in some way, despite them having been lovers at one point. So right. yeah. yeah, yeah, that 
Yeah, that 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 scene worked. Uh, their interactions and stuff that that definitely was the plus. And then the other thing that did stand out to me too was this uh, Agatha uh, related to that um, it was you know Agatha's re- reaction when Teen um, was um, was injured. And just the, because, you know, like when Sharon died, it was sort of like, okay, whatever, you know, and everybody else is like, dude, really? But, you know, but she, whenever teen was, it was, was hurt. And, you know, and to your point uh, about Rio and having some role in, in the you know, taking of Agatha's child earlier, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it does, it does, you know, start to like make, make the audience and wonder like, you know, especially with Agatha, Agatha's actions with Teen, and then seeing her reactions when he's bleeding out like that, uh, you know, does she suspect that Teen is her son? Especially get, given that the sigil is uh, is on him. Yeah, well, I had that suspicion even even at the beginning when it's first brought up that mm-hmm. her son was taken away and like yeah. could still be alive. Like immediately yeah. I thought, well, is it the teen or is that Wanda's kid? And I, right. I think last week I even said, I still think that's yeah. Wanda's kid, yeah. but, and, and I can appreciate, I, I, that seemed too obvious for me to really appreciate, but, but I understand your point. Um, and I did like the line and that and that clarification that no that that boy is not yours um Um, because because it's kind of like for a moment agatha had a little bit of hope yeah and then that was even taken away from her granted hope can be dangerous (laughs) (laughs) unlike agatha and and we do learn more about the sigil like it works on the witch who casted it too Mm -hmm. so 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 it they can't also so i it works on the witch who casted it too so then the witch who casted it cannot anytime that they try to say the teen's name or anything mm-hmm. about him and where he comes from like they nobody can hear it right is right, that how right. that would work yeah yeah okay Okay. Yeah. Well, then, like we knew from that moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that it wasn't them. And and I think I think maybe Agatha did too because she's the one who said that. Mm-hmm. So hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but but um, you it it needs to be destroyed, and that only can happen when it's no longer needed. Mm-hmm. So. So when does the kid turn 18? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what? And also no longer needed. Hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they're doing a good job with the teen. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah. So far, I thought I thought it would be a little more annoying, but but it's not. Um, it's a good thread to continue pulling, f- pulling forward and. Um, yeah, so I mean, again, not the best episode so far, but I I think there were a few a few moments, yeah. and um, we're just gonna keep going down this road because apparently that's the arc of this season. <laughs> yep, that's the arc. That's the template. I know I was concerned about that with a uh, another show we we're gonna talk about here in a few minutes, but uh, but yeah, it's it's very clear now that they they definitely have their template and. We know we're episode five, so um, of eight, so we'll 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 we will get uh, we'll get those other two trials, and then we'll, we'll you know we'll we'll have our Marvel ending. Yeah, um, the other show we're going to talk about tonight is the Penguin episode three, Bliss. Oz and Sophia must address the skeletons in their closet as they attempt to control the future of Gotham's drug trade, while Victor is torn between his new life and what remains of his old one. Um, so this is Vic's episode. Yep. Yep. Vic's episode. And, and it dawned on me. Okay. So we've had three episodes of the penguin episode one, clearly the penguins episode episode two, we got a lot more and the cold open was all Sophia. Mm -hmm. And now the cold open is Vic. And Mm -hmm. this episode is truly his episode. And so I like that now, fingers crossed, we've got 
the setup for our three central characters out of the way. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so curious about next week. Um, and and that how that'll that'll play out because um, I feel like they they have their chess pieces um, in place and then some. But my first question to you, Will, um, at what point during the cold open did you realize that we were watching the end of the Batman through Vic's perspective? Um, I think when they were so you know Vic goes meets his you know goes to his family. They have their you know their uh, in, inside the Spider Verse moment, the household and stuff, uh, and, and you know he has the conversation where he leaves with when he, whenever he leaves the home and has a, that that uh, pointed discussion with his father about ambition mm-hmm. and and all and how that ended. I was just like, oh, I get it now. This was. This was the night of the, the night that the Riddler set off the bombs. It was it was in that moment whenever he whenever they were, whenever he left and how things were left with his father was when right. I realized it. Right. Well, you caught on a lot quicker than me because it was right when they started setting off the bombs. Because <laughs> I I don't know I was just. I was like, oh yay, we finally get to see Vic's Vic's family. We're we're seeing more of his story. And and I knew in the back of my mind and my subconscious, I knew that his crown point was destroyed. But for some reason I just did not put two and two together, fortunately. Um, so so I yeah, I yeah. I was but- a bit surprised, but it also it worked really well. It worked well. I will say, even though I, I, I kind you know, whenever, especially when the bombs went off and it, it confirmed my suspicions, just the the cinematography and the scale and the scope of what happened, it really contextualized more of what happened at the end of the Batman and really just it really drove it home in a more visceral way. Because when you see the floodwaters rushing in and and, and you know maybe it's just due to some real world stuff I've been dealing with here in my state. Um, but you know, taking it back to the show, um, just seeing that, seeing the bridge and the, you know, and then coming and hitting the apartment and just wiping, you know, seeing that wiping Victor's family out. I mean, it was just that, you know, I know we both were like, you know, trying to figure out how we felt about Vic as a character. And this really, like, it, this was the really deepened my understanding starting to help me understand what 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 this character is about um mm-hmm. with you know seeing seeing things like you you know when we're seeing think the crown we, you know we, we had reference to it and we've seen all the fallout from the batman from the riddler setting off the bombs but this really drove it home in a real way with one of our lead characters uh in this show and it, you know it was it was it was it was a gut punch i mean as far as it it it, it was very what they intended for it to do to make you care more about Vic, I, I think they succeeded in that. Right, right. Um, we also, um, during that process, get introduced to his girlfriend, mm-hmm. and um, who also survives because they are together on that night at the rooftop. Yeah. And um, so later on in the episode, when when Vic does not get to be driver. Um, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Yeah. He um, is home alone at Penguin's place. And I just love how it's not even two minutes. He immediately calls his girlfriend. I'm like, yep. wow, you are a child. <laughs> you are a child. And yeah, because Penguin's like, I know, I, you know, I will know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. Not, I don't understand. Um, so, so, and then we get his his overall um, crisis this episode, which is she wants to leave, and he, considering his position with the penguin, doesn't know really if he can just walk out. Um, so, and which leads to some really good scenes, um, especially um, between him and Oz as. Um, this episode is really developing that father son dynamic between these two for better and for worse. Yeah. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the, the put the, the the bookends that they had with really with the A, you know, with with you know clearly the, the big story was the A story in this episode, and then between the cold open, the 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 lunch that they had in a fancy restaurant while they mm-hmm. while they were you know setting up. Um, um, Oh gosh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Luke, Luca's wife. I can't remember her name, but uh, the, the conversation they, they had there, um, and you know, you know, Penguin Oz learning more about Vic's family, and you know, the whole thing about ambition, and also just their relationship too, because like when a waiter, for example, you know, is is you know, trying to when Victor's struggling, you know, with a stutter to to place his order, you know, the protective nature of Penguin, you know, came out. Um, yeah, as, as far as when the waiter was doing his thing, and but then when you get to the end of the episode, uh, after Vic has his panic attack, um, and and trying to uh finally sh- share with with uh, Oz with his, with his girlfriend waiting on the bus, um, uh, you know he's trying to you know Oz sees the phone the message and just how all that played out, and you see the flip side of of Oz um try you know the manipulative nature of oz but also that scene with with vic and oz there in the, in the bathroom was just so it just worked so on so many levels from a performance standpoint because in in the same mode where um you know oz like went back to the bullying you know putting a gun to his head like trying you know manipulation literally with you know with with threat of force um he was also still like like genuinely hurt as far as the emotion too in in his own kind in, in Oz's own kind of way. And just how that was all sold was just like just really just really you know so many levels there uh, within that within that within that scene that um you know really really st- stood out to me um how, how you know as far as the manipulation but also the guilt trip that he was doing and then but also the i think some level of hurt too because you know because of how well they set things up earlier in the episode with the, with the conversation that they had at at the restaurant yeah i i think there's manipulation in both scenes oh yeah there is i i mean there's manipulation since they first encountered because yeah. i mean Penguin has no need for him. So he it's it's this weird position as a viewer for me because he's technically expendable. Mm-hmm. But I think the penguin also because of his stammer um mm-hmm. sees something like a um sees so much of a, a kindred spirit yeah. and he wants to give this kid is shot and he's really taken under his wing. Um, and so I don't know why I never think that the, I, I don't, I haven't from the get go penguin will never hurt Vic. Yeah. (laughs) He won't. The (laughs) hangman will, but, but penguin will never, um, hurt Vic, um, no matter what. And so I, I just, but I, I think that what I, what I can appreciate is that in that cold open, um, there, there, there is that conversation between, uh, Vic and his girlfriend looking at Gotham, the big city and, and where all the fancy people live. And you can tell in that moment, just through his eyes that he, um, he aspires to live mm-hmm. there and yep. to be make make it there. And I don't now, I don't know when the heck the penguin saw that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's honestly something that for one reason or another the penguin knows about, and that's where he really twists it, and he's really able to to use like. I did it. You can too. Mm-hmm. Just follow my lead. Yeah. Like you, you see me, and they accept me. So, so yeah. it's just, um, it, it, yeah, it is a twisted like uh, American 
pull yourselves up by the bootstrap american you know american dreams even though it's the criminal underworld <laughs> type of story there yeah, you know, it's, was, yeah. Just, it's people who and we've seen the relationship between oz and his mom mm -hmm. so the manipulation that occurs between oz and vic like yeah. it makes sense mm -hmm. oz doesn't know any other way so yeah, yeah. And that's honestly, true. it could be worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. I mean, I, I mean, people, you know, people do like, you know, whatever patterns, good and bad, you pick up from your parents. It carries, you know, it does carry forward in, in your own parenting style. And, uh, and and we see that as far as, I guess, like you said, I mean, Oz is sort of has become sort of the surrogate father for, for Vic. And, and, and so that model that he that he grew up with is now what he's what he's doing to, to Vic. Right, right. And and there isn't anything wrong with wanting more. It's just yeah, the no. means of how you go about it. Right. Um and and so far technically Vic hasn't really done that much wrong. No. <laughs> I mean, he even gave a cop a thousand bucks, but yeah, the cop yeah. took it. <laughs> so, <Yep. laughs> which yeah. you could tell in that scene he's learning from his mistakes because that was good improvisation when things mm -hmm. go a little bit sideways and then yep. by the end when he literally crashes the party to ultimately save oz he he again working on the improvisation so yeah. Yeah. um yeah i think i think those the arc um was good um a little bit of a fresh perspective yeah. And and more of an understanding of how Oz can um, how and why Oz keeps Vic around yeah. um, and why. And now, more importantly, by the end of episode, why Vic stays. Yeah. 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 Even though his dad would not be proud of him. No, no. <laughs> Which yeah, that is that definitely would not be proud of him, but we do. But it, I think they did a great job of like like you said, uh, helping us understand why he sticks around. And um, and um, but also the other thing too is just um, why Colin Farrell is just doing such an amazing job with this character. In that you know, thinking about that bathroom scene, he I I actually felt whenever whenever the manipulation was going on. I still almost felt sorry for for I felt bad for Oz that Vic was even thinking about leaving, which is just like yeah, yeah they're making me care about the villain. <laughs> oh, but it's it's he's not the villain. He's no. the hero. He's a hero. Yeah, I have to show. remember that. Yep, this is his yeah. show. He's the hero of his story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's you 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 need to like him, and honestly, they're like yeah, like Vic, but. I wouldn't say like your alternative is liking the hag man. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah. but she Sophia is also coming into her own. Mm -hmm. Um and and I and I'm starting to really come around on her yeah. mainly because I really appreciate the the lack of clarification about the history. Yeah. Uh we we learned in this episode he used to be her driver mm -hmm. and and we still don't know the full beat for betray beat betrayal betrayal that occurred but they were definitely close yep and 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 i i really like the conversation at the end where they like it was the first arguably real conversation where Again, we had just seen him break down over Vic and and it makes sense that he would come off or have this response then when Sophia finally confronts him and just said, did he get everything you wanted? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and yep. and I also like he's like, yeah, fuck, I did. Yep. <laughs> I did. I'm not did. sorry for that because yeah. because if he had if he had said it like it's bullshit, he isn't sorry. Yep. Exactly. But at the same time, it's this weird thing where I I almost don't know if it's true or if I want it to be true. The mm -hmm. next line he says where he did does regret 
having hurt her. Yeah. And what what he did to her. And so it's like you don't regret the outcome. Well, duh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's probably but, the most truthful thing he said. <laughs> yeah, the the but the means to get there was only one path, or or maybe we don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. there was an option, and maybe that's what he regrets, and that's what he was talking about. So, yeah. I, like that, the mystery of the full context of the history with these characters, mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. they're. Um, piece by piece, putting that together over the course of the season, I really, I really like, because that adds intrigue for me and curiosity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that to that scene too, is just you know, to your, just to think a little bit more about it whenever, uh, again, uh, Colin Farrell, just fucking amazing because like whenever he started tearing up when he was telling Sophia that while he was still, I mean, it's just the, the, the depths of, his of, of, of the, even though like you said he doesn't regret what he got but he you know but at the same time he's you know conveying it, there seems to be something he's feeling there i don't know what the emotion is uh, because he, he he's he just he feeds so many lies you just it reaches a point like you know what is the truth with this guy um, because he is a survivor, like we talked about last week. With uh, like you reminded, you, you, you made the great call back to uh, Yabushige from from Shogun. Yeah. Um, you know he will do what he needs to suit his own end, and especially we see that at the end of this episode because when when Vic rescue you know rescues them both from the Maronis, you know he she he jumps in the car and Vic's like, what about you know there what, what about Sophie? And Sophia, and he's just like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so after so all, yeah, <laughs> af- after all that saying, he was, you know, I, you know, you got it, you can trust me, and all the stuff he built up, he still reverted back to the, you know, back to that survival mode because that's what he knows. Yeah, I don't. I guess I retract that statement. I don't know if that's the smartest thing he could have done because yeah. now you have Sophia and Nadia. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to talk yeah. yep. <laughs> and neither one of them trusts. I mean, I, I, this episode, I think does a good job of putting the Maronis on the back burner mm-hmm. without the viewer even realizing it. So when Nadia appears, you're like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank God. they're actually smart. <laughs> Yeah. It also, they appear in a way where it's like, okay, thank God, we're working with a lot of smart characters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yep, not we are. Good characters. <laughs> yeah. um, because they're all bad guys, and typically bad guys are not the brightest. Right. So, so Nadia and, like, Oz and Vic may have gotten away, but now, technically, you have kind of two enemies who mm-hmm. are going to potentially make an alliance yeah. so i don't know if leaving sophia was in the best interest but at the same time it's like he's got to get away from nadia because of they were not happy which which i was right at the end of last yeah. episode nadia never got her guy back okay she never did yeah they pieced never it together did. and where the heck is that actress from okay i know i say it up but yeah. i swear to god I've seen her in so many things and I just, and she's always really good. I just, I can't place it. Yeah. I, I know I, I'm the same way too. I need to look at the IMDB uh, and, uh, real fast just to like to place her because she, she is all, yeah, she's, all, I've seen her in other stuff and she's always delivers a great performance. Um, but uh, yeah, but I agree. I, I, um, yeah, you know, oh, you're right. Okay. She was from the House of Sand and Fog. Oh, uh, okay. Way back in 2003 with um yeah. I believe that was with Ben Kingsley. I remember that. Mm-hmm. You've seen her in Star Trek Beyond. That's what it was. Yep. 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 I'm just I'm just looking at this. Yeah. Yeah, she's been in a lot of different things. We watched The Flight Attendant. She was in that yeah. show. Yeah, we did watch The Flight Attendant. Yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, but you're right. She it was, was 
That is, sorry, I'm just going to put this out there. This is yeah. funny. Um, 2017, there was a little show called The Punisher. She played oh. Farah Madani. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, that's where I know her from. Okay. Madani. I, I think she was like a police officer or something. Okay. Okay, yeah, and I know her from Star Trek. That's where I remember her from. You're right. I completely remember from Star Trek Beyond, the, the last movie in the uh, Kelvin universe. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, but you know, but uh, you're right, though. It was smart of them to put the Maronis on the back burner this episode. Uh, you know, it's because, you, know, you know, the only place where I feel like the episode kind of did drag a little bit was maybe when they were doing the whole drug trade thing in the in the club as far as what the boys. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, uh, you know that that uh, yeah, that we had to do that to just sort of establish the triads and you know get the you know get the distributors and all that kind of stuff set up. But uh, um, really, the, the the thing that stands out for me with that is just like as we discussed earlier, Vic's panic attack. You know, in the context of the larger A story, and also you know him adapting uh, whenever the uh, cop you know, showed up. Uh, but the rest of it, as far as the bliss and the drugs and stuff, you know, it, you know, we'll, you know, it definitely needed to be set up. So we'll see how all that unfolds uh, throughout the rest of the season beyond the drops. Uh, you know, with, their, with, with all these fake drugs that they come up with in the DC universe. I mean, bliss sounds like something we may have heard about in Titans for, for all I know. Well, yeah. I so it, we find out it comes from Arkham, and it mm -hmm. was used on the patients. And yeah, yeah. I like how uh, little Miss Sophia is being very quiet about the exact effects of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because everyone else is like, it's a party job. And and see, even though the scene went on long and yeah, towards the end, we we get Vic's panic attack. I thought the overall scene and orchestra orchestration, yeah, it brought in the triad and added that extra element because there's a lot of families in Gotham who are fighting over power, but it also re-emphasized more the power struggle occurring between Oz and Sophia. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think they did a good job is that, yeah, these two are aligned, but <laughs> they are very on very shaky terms, especially shaky, yep. because, like, n both of them can never be, like, both of them can't share we're boss together. Like, they're not partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sophia makes that very clear. And then I think that her speech and her ability to sell the drug, she did a very good job because we get the cold open from yep. Vic's perspective mm -hmm. of the downfall of Crown's Point yep. and the devastation. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, that's why any of these drugs will work in Gotham because there's so much devastation, people yep. need an escape from it. Yep. So it's it's leeching onto that vulnerability, which is a mm -hmm. very villainous thing to do. Yep. So it went on a bit long, but I I still think that it it served a lot of different purposes. It did. It did. You're right. I mean it was it wasn't yeah, and when I say yeah, I don't want to I agree. I mean, it wasn't that it was a waste, wasted scenes. I mean, every, everything in this show has a meaning to the larger, the larger tapestry that they're they're mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're painting here. Um, but you're right. I mean, that was um, the, the deep, the especially like when she talked about you know the crime boss for the triad, uh, his his background. Um and, and all and and no way deeper and then one thing too that came out I can't remember when she and and, and Oz well, I did want to ask you what you thought about this when she said this is that that she's not the hangman and and what do you think she was getting at there I I think she said yeah um that was in this episode yeah yeah when. <laughs> Um, well, it was, I guess I also need to know what he said at first. Yeah, I can't remember. It was in, I think was it right before they were going to to find out the, the, the with the mushrooms. I can't remember when it was. I, I just I do remember that coming up, and I was just trying trying to remember. Or was it whenever they were when she dismissed Vic from um, not being the driver that night? Maybe way at the bit, very beginning. But I I mean I did yeah I. I 
I think that was as they were trying to build their alliance and and their and their the shaky trust that they have with one another. I, yeah, I know, I know vaguely the line you're referring to, but yeah. without the context, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't that's really fair. have a lot to go on. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So um, before we leave, I just want to ask you. Hmm? So um, because you keep bringing up Colin Farrell, um, yeah. Emmy season next year, you got yeah. Colin Farrell for this, and then you got <laughs> Pedro Pascal for Last of Us season two. Yeah. But don't worry, they're going to make Pedro be a supporting actor. Yeah, they'll make him be a supporting actor yeah, for sure. So that to guarantee <laughs> that he's able to walk away with something. Yeah. My, my God. For real. But, for real. but I, my God. I've been thinking this whole time, I'm like, wait, wait a second. Are they both going to be nominated simultaneously? And then what do you do? Yeah. And they, yeah, yeah. Well, HBO, yeah, HBO's got to make a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it would make sense for Pedro. Joel is technically he's not the lead. Yeah, yeah. like it's it's Bella's show, yeah. but it's um, but he um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but damn so. it, if if he doesn't get nominated, and they scr- they snub him like they did Patty Casadon, we riot. That's all I gotta say. This is just this is so many riots happening in the world these days. So, <laughs> so many riots. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. One. La- oh, well, I do have one last thing too because I saw this like picking or kicking around, and, and I don't know if you if you if you've heard this theory spiral as well. Um, it, it, that Victor, it, since this was Victor's episode, close with this. Uh, think that any chance you think he is going to end up being Victor's ass, the serial killer, uh, one of, as far as part of Batman's gal- rogue gallery. So, so I will be honest. Yeah. Because there was this little show called Gotham back in the day. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, Pause pos of a trash fire. Yep. Um, and actually, I think it went on for five or six seasons. Crazy. It did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but there was a character called Victor Zaz. Victor Zaz. So I, so I, I kid you not. The first episode, as soon as he said, said his name was Victor, I'm thinking to myself. Oh, so I I wonder if this is going to turn into like that other Victor that I vaguely remember. Who's <laughs> 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 the artist? So yeah, I can totally see that yeah. um, happening. I mean, that that allows you to see an arc of an evolution. I mean, I people keep referencing. Breaking Bad when they do mm-hmm. comparisons to the show and how especially this episode you got um, Walt and Jesse and Vic me and Jesse but I think I think if anything Vic is Walt mm. because Vic there was a chance but the moment his par- family was all stripped from him like that from literally having nothing Mm-hmm. And then to encounter someone who's like, you want something, I can help you get what you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's just this, this weird um, mentorship that's occurring. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think serial killer would take it a bit far, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's an accident when, when you have a character like when you're in Gotham and mm-hmm. people are named certain things, you know? Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. all right. Uh, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Geek Out. You're welcome.